This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And of course, that's the song, What Goes Up Must Come Down. And we're going to be talking about why rich people go broke. I mean, that's, a, that's something everybody wants to hear because some, most people are broke. And, you know, misery loves company, so they all want people to go broke. That's why we're going to probably elect a socialist president. And because everybody now wants everybody to go broke together. That's my opinion for the day. So anyway, our guest today is uh, our dear friend of ours, uh, John McGregor and J.W. Wilson. The uh, three of us played rugby all the way through Hawaii and all over the world. And we're on our way to Japan for the Rugby World Cup. And John's going to be launching his new book called The Ten, Top Ten Reasons the Rich Go Broke, Powerful Stories That Will Transform Your Financial Life. In other words, learn from other idiots before you become the idiot. And another friend is a long, long time friend is G.W. Wilson. He's the executive director of the Learning Code Institute. And he research develops, implements scientific-based learning and marketing programs. And he's a soon-to-be-released book, Cracking the Learning Code. J.W., that's been a long time to hear about that book. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to be talking about my favorite subject, which is money. But why are some people rich? Why are some people wo- poor? And why are so many people going broke as the economy changes? As, uh, I don't know the name of that group, but what, what goes up will come down. That is the law of nature. Any comments, Kim? Well, I'm happy to have John and J.W. here. Nice to have you in the in the studio, John and J.W. on the phone. Um, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun because what I like is, you know, the top ten reasons people rich people go broke. Well, what can you learn from that? If you're not a rich person, what are you going to learn from that? And, and or if you are rich. Yeah, and if you are rich and the, and the stories – um, that John has are, are pretty transformational in terms that that will that would apply to everybody. So uh, we're going to learn a lot today. So Kim, John, and uh, J.W. and I were all residents of Hawaii. We all left the we left the uh, People's Republic of Hawaii. And John has down here former certified financial planner. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to think former former. <laughs> so anyway, um, J.W. was age before beauty. We'll let you go first. What what? Tell us about your your soon to be released book. I've been here about for like forty five years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we give well, it, we, we have to give you know it's it's a guy thing. If you find the weakest <laughs> point and you pick on him, so JW, uh, give us a little. No, don't, don't talk about the book, but give us a little bit of your background and how did we go from basically drunk rugby players in Hawaii forty years ago to now talking about education and money? How'd that happen? Right, right. Well, really what happened was I think all three of us recognized that the existing system wasn't giving people what they needed. I mean, that's really the basis of what you and Kim did with Rich Dad. And um, and John uh, was was doing the same thing, helping people, people with financial planning, getting their lives in financial order, transforming their relationships with money. Um, And what I've been doing is doing neurological and genetic research at the Institute. We've researched 6,000 genes that control neurological function and basically reversed engineered how to turn those on. I'm being very metaphorical here if there's some neuroscientists listening uh, so that everybody can understand it. So you can turn those genes on so they literally express proteins and enzymes and change the shape of your brain. What that means is without changes in the shape of your brain, there's no changes in your behavior. And John and I have been working um, in the financial world and with you, Robert, to help use this science to help people, and you, Kim, to help uh, people really get what they want out of life, the peace, fulfillment, and joy that they haven't gotten, that the educational system hasn't given them. That's good. And John McGregor, give us a look. How did you you become a financial planner and why is this? You're a certified financial planner. What's the difference? And, and then now you're a former certified financial. I didn't know that. 
So what's the difference between Are us? you really a former sir? I don't know where that came from, actually. <laughs> I think JW slipped it in. There. I'm still a financial certified financial planner, but I, th- I like to think that I do it a little differently now. That, uh, the, I, I think, I, I, that was news I, to me, too. I also think JW slipped in there that you're now a professional hula dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so, John, what's the difference between a certified financial planner and a regular financial planner? Um, well, the certified financial planner, it's a rather grueling process. I think the easiest way to explain it is really uh, the, the, the certified financial planner is like a CPA, whereas a regular financial planner is like a uh, uh, an accountant. Uh, a, uh, no, it's not even that. Is what you all, don't you always say that? It takes longer for a hairdresser to get well, a that's license. Well, that's where I was going. Yeah, a financial planner. You can be a you can be a financial planner in six weeks, where it takes a, a hairdresser a year and a half to get their license. Yeah. So, and how long? And you know, I, I I went in for the CFP. It was it was too rigorous for me. I couldn't take it. Yeah. I, I quit after about six months. But it's about two years, isn't it? It, it was a long process. I had to take various uh, graduate study courses um, at the university. And uh, and so generally speaking, it's a two- to three-year process, and then the exam is a two-day grueling exam. So, yeah, it's, so a, when, it's a tough process. So when you meet somebody who says, yes, I'm a financial planner, and they're working for you know, brand X and brand Y and all that, what's the difference in service a person would get from a CFP versus a regular six-week financial planner? Well, it, there's there's a lot of difference. Not anyone can sit for the CFP exam. You need experience, and um, you need to be in the business for quite some time. So you need to build up a lot of a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience before you can even you can even do that. Um, the other thing is a CFP is considered a fiduciary, so we're held to a much higher level of standard with our clients. What than does a fiduciary mean? Because that's a new popular word on CNBC. It, it, it is, and it's misused quite a bit. And right. I think a lot of fiduciaries use it as a marketing tool, and it can be very misleading to an individual investor. But basically speaking, a, a traditional financial planner is held to a suitability standard with their clients, whereas a fiduciary is held to the best interest of their clients. And, and when you, you, you say you, you tell Wall Street, and that, when you yeah. say you do things a little differently yeah. than a traditional. Yeah. Certified funding. How, what do you do differently? So, and and this has to do with JW as well. So for many years, I was doing your traditional financial planning with individuals, pouring graphs, charts, financial plans, showing clients if they continue on the trajectory that they're on, they're going to be bankrupt by the time they're in their mid-60s or they're not going to have the retirement that they want. And so we'd show them the, the graphs and the programs and, and all of that information. But as soon as they left my office, they were on their way to Best Buy to buy a flat screen on a credit card. All that planning that I gave them and I told them and all the advice and the strategies and the tactics and the tools do nothing to address the core issue of what's really driving people and why they become broke or why they stay poor, why they continue to live paycheck to paycheck. You know, when, when I started... Well, it's even worse because, you know, you grew up in Hawaii... You had some very wealthy clients. Absolutely, and they went broke too. Right? Absolutely, that's what that's what the the book was about. And then you, you prompted that that idea in my head based on all the stories I would share with you. And you came to me a few you know about eight months ago and said, "Hey, John, that's the book we should write is why the rich go broke," which is generally speaking why most people stay broke. It's not just the rich, but these stories happen to be so compelling that that that's what we decided to to write about. But just because they're rich, they're not immune from making the same mistakes everyone else makes. And I always want to define what, what do you mean by rich? You know, that's always been my bugaboo. Just because somebody has a nice house in Hawaii and a, two Mercedes doesn't mean they're rich. That's the, that's the first story in the book I talk about where it was, I was a landscaper in, in college um, and uh, working on my favorite house in Hawaii, Lower Ridge, gorgeous estate straight out of a magazine, uh, beautiful backyard, and yet when I looked inside the house, it was plastic furniture. They were not even living there. They were living in the sister's basement because they had run out of money. And they, they were living look good. They looked good on the outside. And, and, and so we worked on a lot of very nice houses, and my boss told me, he said, this is how most of the people are living wow. that we're working on. Wow. And when, and when you say, you know, there's the core, what's at the core is what's driving them and what drives them broke to go broke, what gets, what's an example of like a core thing really, that the, you come across? The commonality of all these stories that I share, Kim, 
it, it comes down to an acronym that we've created, and it all starts with people's beliefs around money. And these are harmful beliefs. It's almost like a virus in their head, like a computer. The acronym is BEAR, B-E-A-R. That's what we came up with, and, and that's the commonality, not only for these rich people or the stories that I, that I tell, but it's in general with anybody who's struggling with, with their finances. And by the way, when we started this project, when JW and I started this Thrive Path company four years ago, 73% of people were living paycheck to paycheck. Despite all the information, the wait, free- wait, 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 73% of people in, in the US society, in the US 73 are living paycheck to paycheck paycheck to paycheck wow. despite all the information that's now available for free literally on the website on what to do what not to do with your money today that number is 78 mm-hmm. percent the problem is getting worse not better and the traditional methods going back to what you asked me what's different the traditional methods of how people deal with their financial plan how financial how the financial planning industry uh, help, tries to help clients does not work. It does not affect meaningful change. Selling somebody a financial product is not what people need in order to overcome their financial situation. So once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Radio Show. I have two great friends, longtime friends, I mean, 40, 50 years now. And we all played rugby together in Hawaii. We're, we're, again, we're going to the rugby, rugby World Club in Japan together. We'll be teaching in Japan together. And the reason JW is part of our group here is because JW is the expert on what goes on inside the brain. That's why he's, he's the executive director of the Learning Code Institute. Because what, what JW talks to John and I about is how come people can't change? I mean, they, they know it's coming, but they cannot change. So JW, yep. what causes people to not be able to change? Well, let's start really where the problem starts. It's in our educational system. How many people listening to this radio show took a course in college about how to become peaceful, joyful, fulfilled, and rich? Not me. Nobody did. (laughs) Not me. Nobody did. (laughs) Right? So the things that really matter in life, you know, your, your financial freedom, your ability to feel joyful, feel at peace, Our educational system pays no attention to any of that. What they do is they focus on trying to have you get good grades and to get a diploma. But just like John says, 78% of the people out there, they all have the diploma. They got good grades, or a lot of them got good grades, yet they're miserable. They're more stressed. They're more anxious. uh, They're they're more unhappy than they've ever been before. John, what what percent of people are unhappy in the in America right now? It's well, a it huge number. directly correlated to the number of people living paycheck to paycheck. It's in the 70, high 70s, 78%, I would say. Yeah, and so, and I've read some research, it's about 60%. So, and why is that? Well, the problem is, we the, the first, we don't have the education, and thank God for Rich Dad and you and Kim Robert, because if we didn't have people like you, helping people really understand how to be financially free, we'd have, where could we go? Because what John is saying, we go back to the traditional financial world, and what they do is they try to teach us the way that we were taught in school. But you know, it's but, not but, working. You know, we all know that. The question is, when a person knows that, they still can't change. What is it that and, keeps people so set that even if you told them that this is, you know, when John tells them, he says, look, Here you are at 45, at 65, you're going to be broke. They still cannot change. That's really the question, J.W. Why? It's a great question. That's what I'm asking you. (laughs) You give me a hard time. What I do is basically when I'm on stage, I I bring up a piece of cheese and I show it to people. And what happens is the way you've learned to behave up till now is literally made out of fats and proteins. These are synapses. These are the little buds on. In other words, a piece of cheese. Your brain is a piece exactly. of cheese. Oh, good. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> well, your, me- your memory, what happens in your memory when you learn something, um, basically it, it, it produces neurons and neural tissue, which is really made out of the same thing as cheddar cheese, fats and proteins. And what happens is those fats and proteins then direct your behaviors. So in a way, people have learned how to not use money effectively. So they can't and change the, the problem- cheese. They cannot change the cheese. 
that's exactly right. And that's what we're committed to at the Institute is developing systems, structures, policies and procedures and processes to help people change that cheese so they can change their life. I have an idea. Why don't you send a rat in there? I'll eat that cheese. Up, man. Yeah, it'll be much faster. <laughs> So, John, really you, know, you, you deal, I mean, you know, the, one of the reasons a lot of times I want to quit my business, I get so tired of talking to idiots. You know, you, you talk to them, say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to change, but I don't change. Or, you know, I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to lose weight, but I don't change. And then when you actually show them their finances and they know they're on the road to the eve of destruction, they still can't change. I mean, isn't that kind of your, your yeah. frustration? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's, it's really about behavior change, whether it's about quitting smoking or getting in shape. But here we're talking about personal finance because this personal finance issue, it's not about more information. We know what to do with our money. Everyone knows what we need to do with our money for the most part, but people don't do it. And it's because they are hardwired by the time they're 18 on, on their belief system. This belief system is really their unconscious, and, and our unconscious controls 95% of everything we think, do, act, behave, and ultimately become. So these beliefs like, I'm not good with money. Money's the root of all evil. My spouse will take care yeah, of me. Yeah, we've heard that a lot. It's too complicated. I'm not good with numbers. I'm not good with math My or eyes numbers. glaze over. That's what I hear women say. My eyes glaze over. I just don't get it. Exactly. I need an image, like that first story we told you. I told you about. These beliefs drive people and basically control everything they do, act, and, and think, and like I said, ultimately become. So from the beliefs, those then turn into excuses, which lead to actions, which end in disaster, disastrous results. That's the bear trap, the B-E-A-R, beliefs to excuses to actions to results. And that's what we've come up with. And so the only way for people to get out of this mess is to change their beliefs. That's where it starts. And that's what both you and JW focus on. Correct. Yeah, absolutely right. Yes. Stop exactly. thinking that your spouse is going to take care of you. Because even pay attention to the thoughts in your head. People aren't even aware they're thinking these thoughts. That's right. That's right. Because the cheese. They've got too much cheese in the way, right? <laughs> it's in their unconscious. That's exactly right. They're not even yeah. aware. So, so is that is one of the first steps, JW, then, to just be aware of your thoughts? What What's a first step for somebody to, to, to change those beliefs? You hit that right on the head. Um, Kim, basically, without awareness, there's no transformation. So what happens is, literally, people just keep keep thinking, well, if I work harder, if I get a better job, if I move here, I'll be happy. So it's funny what you just said, Kim. We have, depending on the, on the scientific experts you listen to, we have between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day. Do you know how many of those thoughts are the same thoughts we had yesterday? I bet a huge percentage. Almost 92%. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So basically what we're Same doing thoughts. is... We're, we're, if, we're recycling. Exactly. So if, and, what we do, and our behaviors are based on those thoughts. So if we haven't been successful last week with the strategies in our head and the thinking that's in our head, why do we think that, that thinking and those strategies are going to be successful tomorrow? So what people do is... is, is, is uh, as Deming used to say, is we recycle. And Edward Deming, a, 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 an economic expert way back in the 50s, what he said is basically what we're doing is recycling ignorance. And that's what the financial industry is doing. That's what education is doing. And that's what we're doing to ourselves. We're taking our existing stuff that's not working, and we keep doing it more uh, and more. KJW, but we've, 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 you know, people, you know, anybody listening to Rich Dad Radio Show has already heard this before. I want to hear from you. Just how does somebody melt that cheese down? That's really the issue here because, I mean, yes, I, I get is. sick and tired of talking to people who cannot change. You know, like yeah. I meditated this morning. I go to the gym this morning. I read spiritual books this morning. I call my spiritual consultant to change my brain. I'm working on me that's, constantly. And most people, exactly as John says, right. you know, they're at Costco buying the new big TV set. And they can't change Boy. that. So the question is, yeah. you know, we can talk about the problem all day long, but we've really got to figure out, I mean, how does a person want to change, especially when it's hard to? I mean, it's a thing called habits and addictions to me, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. And so what happens is we've developed a system where we think events can change your, beha your behavior. You, if I just, you know, get more information, I'll be better. Correct. The problem is what we found is 
that the only way to change neurological structures is not through information. The brain literally has to enter a process of transformation. That's what you're doing, Robert. You're literally changing your neurobiology and even your neurochemistry, your stress levels, everything else are being changed. When you start doing things like meditation, mindfulness, when you start, because when you go on a spiritual path, a path of changing your insides, we run around trying to change the outside world, thinking, thinking that that'll change our insides, but we've got it backwards. If we start changing the inside of ourselves, then we'll notice the outside world starts to look very different and act very different because our internal vibratory frequency starts attracting things to us that are very different. Amen. Once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Radio Show. We're talking to John McGregor, our friend from Hawaii. In fact, we were neighbors for a while. And J.W. Wilson, another guy from Hawaii. And we're all rugby players. And my sweetheart, Kim. And uh, we're all going off to Japan for the World Rugby Club to watch the greatest sport on earth, rugby. And uh, But we're also become educators. And we're very frustrated that people cannot change what they think. So when we come back, we're going more into how you can change and change that cheese in your head. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Day Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And I don't know what fret name, my mind, my cheese is not doing too well. I know that song, <laughs> but I don't remember the band. But we're talking about, we're talking to J.W. Wilson, great friend for years and years and years from Hawaii, and John McGregor, another great friend. We all played rugby together from Hawaii. And Kim, also from University of Hawaii graduate. Thank you. But we're all here in the States because we just could not put up with the Communist Republic of Hawaii any longer. <laughs> and JW is the executive director of the Learning Code Institute, which researches, develops, and implements scientific-based scientific learning and marketing programs and coming out with his book soon called Cracking the Learning Code. And John McGregor is a certified financial planner and author. But he's also the- classmates of... Barack Obama, Barack Obama, the president Obama. of the United go. States. There I don't like go. to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> and he does have a book called The Top Ten Reasons the Rich Go Broke, Powerful Stories That Will Transform Your Financial Life Forever. So, so we We're get- talking about how people can change because, in my opinion, that's one of the hardest things I've seen people do. You ask them, do you want to be happy? Yes. you want to be healthy? Yes. you want to be wealthy? Yes. As long as I don't have to change. As long as I don't, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. As long as I'm yeah. not uncomfortable. And so we're talking about change. You know, both this, we talk, we left the thing talking about the spiritual side is I know I'm effed up. I really do. I'm one of the most effed up guy I know. That's why I have so, so-called therapist. I also meditate and I go to the gym and I do those things. I have a doctor who's always kicking my butt on my health. And I'm proactive on things. That's, that's the big difference. And what John the reason John came up with the top 10 reasons the rich go broke is because he started telling me stories of people he'd be, you know, counseling and guiding and saying, if you keep doing this, you're going to go broke. And they go broke. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, actually, you think about it. And so for all you listening right now who know you're on the glide path to going broke, you know, this is your program, but it does no good if you cannot make those changes in sight. Don't expect the economy to change or expect, you know, the next president to change everything for you because if you're going broke, you're going to go broke no matter what, who the president or economy, you know, whoever, whoever happens. You know, I've seen people in the biggest boom economy in Hawaii, they're still broke. I mean, you, you have to be an idiot not to get rich in Hawaii, but people still didn't get rich right in front of them. And so that's, that's really what we're talking about today. It's nothing to do with outside of you. It's about what's inside of you. So, yes. Yes. JW, how come people are on the glide path to disaster, most of them right now? Why can't they well, change? Well, basically, yeah, because well, kind of what we were talking about before, what has to happen is you, with, you, you can't change your outside world till you change your inside world. And so... What, what, what we and John have been developing are ways that people can cha- transform your relationship with money through a process. Um, and we kind of talked about it before. You have to understand your existing beliefs are destroying you. You have to be aware that the way, what you're doing right now is not giving you what you, what you want. Say and that, you say that again, look. JW, because that's really important. I mean, that's like a first step. Th- that what, that what, what you're, you're doing, doing today. Working? Yeah, what you're doing today you know, is not going to get you what you want. 
it can't possibly do it. Your, the, your cheese, your existing structures are going to force you to do what you did today, tomorrow. That's why 90% of your thoughts are the same ones you had yesterday. So without changing this cheese, this internal environment, there is literally no way you can change your external environment. So that's, you know, I mean, J.W., this is all wonderful. I call it happy horseshit. You know, I mean, like, like I, I really know I should, I should not eat, you know, McDonald's, yes. but they just changed their fresh yes. meat now. So I have to go back to McDonald's. I mean, <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? And, and I, I know yes, a six-pack of Miller Lite is not going to make me skinnier, even though there's less carbs in it. See, we basically right. we dilute ourselves is what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will get to. So that's really yes. what I'm saying here is because if a person doesn't have something they can actually change inside, but they still have to do something on the outside. And that's really yes. what, what happens to me. The reason, the reason Kim and I created the cash flow board game is so you have to do something. The reason I learned about money was playing Monopoly with my rich dad. You know, I was doing something. And too many people just hang out inside their head and they hang, the, the, the number two thing that happens to people is they hang out with losers. They hang out with losers. You know, I mean, I, I sit there and I can, I can feel them, smell them, taste them. They come up to me and they go, you know, can you help me with my money? I think, John, you got sick of that too, didn't you? All the time, yeah. Uh, everyone's looking for a quick fix. John, what do you think of Google today? You know, should I buy IBM or Microsoft? Or Bitcoin. Or, what, do you think about Bitcoin? Or what do you think about Bitcoin? You know, I've got, I've got 10 grand. What's the best mutual fund or ETF I should get into? That's, that's all they're looking for is a quick pill that they can swallow and hopefully change their life. And that's just not the case. It drove me nuts. And I so just what, got. What, what do you think about the McDonald's new all beef patty? <laughs> you know, they, they just renovated a McDonald's in my neighborhood. I mean, it looks fantastic. I've been trying to get reservations in there for a while. <laughs> I'm looking for that corner table. So, JW, what does a person got to do? So, I mean, I, let me chime in on this. So, the, so the first thing that we do that I've done, and years of frustration dealing with clients. Like I said, walking out my door, going back to the same old ba bad behaviors that got them in the mess in the first place. That's what the purpose of this book is. And we talk about beliefs. And just to boil it down, what I want to do is I want to get people to really understand why these beliefs are driving them nuts and why, they're, why these beliefs are controlling them. So it's as simple as writing down what they believe about money. Just take out a piece of paper and write them down. Money's the root of all evil, if that's one of yours. Your spouse is in control of the money. Well, how about this one? The one. rich are crooks. The rich are crooks. Um, you know, the one that you talk about that drove so much controversy. Your house is an asset. Um, it's not an asset. Or, excuse me, not an asset. Um, the other ones that get people in trouble, I don't need help. Write all of these down and then start to question these beliefs if they are true or not. And this comes from Byron Katie. Exactly. But, and are the, they... but the biggest one here is I say, if I had money, then I'd be rich. That's the other one. Yeah, I need quite, money to well, be Well, the reason you have, do I have money is because you're not rich. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's another one. I need money to be happy. And are they even your beliefs or are they somebody else's that's and where do correct. they come from? Are they from your parents, from your teachers, from society? Are that, they your beliefs? You, you nailed it, Kim. So write down these beliefs and just take as much time as you can coming up with every type of belief that you have around money. And then and then write in another column who came up with these beliefs or where did they come from? Like you said, Kim, was it your school? Was it your teacher? Was it your parents? Um, was it your siblings? And then write down whether or not your life would be different with or without these beliefs. I want people to really start challenging their beliefs because that's where the problem starts. And the second thing after beliefs is then your friends and family have to change. <laughs> well, that's the biggest part of it. In, I mean, in a way, yeah. yeah. In a, in, in a way. Environment, your environment has to change. That's right. So, Robert, you will write in. Basically, our neurological structures are dictated by environment. That's why, that's why Muslims are Muslims and Christians are Christians. When you start hanging out with rich people, you start to get rich. You hang out with poor people, and you're going to be poor. And your brain wants to do that. You literally have neurons called mirror neurons that force you to mimic the behaviors that you see around you. We see it in fashion, and we think it's cool. But the problem is the same thing happens in finance. Yep. So, Kim, anything you want to say about this? Because you talk to a lot of women. It isn't, isn't a lot, not can't, this is dangerous territory right now. <laughs> but you, you, once, you once said that a man is not a financial plan. A or man something is like. not a financial plan. Well, look at all the women out there. I mean, even look at when you, even on the simplest level, when some, somebody says, well, is he a good provider? 
I mean, that alone is saying you're in this thing for money. I mean, yes, oh, I love him, but is he a good provider? Well, how about this? What's his FICO score? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a better, deeply, that's a better yeah. question. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think I think the biggest myth out there is that women who marry for money, and, and on all levels, from being a good provider to the 20-year-old marrying the 80-year-old, you know, because he's wealthy. That, Ooh, that does, sounds like a good I idea. I think that just kills a woman, a woman's spirit because she knows that she's trading. She's, she knows what she's trading for money. Um, so, yeah, I hear it a lot, and I think it's a shame. I, I can't tell you how many stories I've had. In fact, my, my practice grew into this specialty of helping widows sort through their financial mess once their husband passed away. In fact, I, was, I, I would get a lot of calls from attorneys that needed my help to get in there and help organize or figure out where everything is. And one of the stories I talk about is a is an old woman, uh, a little is that old. Why you never been married, that's John? Probably why I've never been married. That's, that's, one, that's a big reason. But she was certain that her husband was taking care of everything, and by no means was he. In fact, we he he got dementia in the end. We found stock certificates in the refrigerator. It was an absolute <laughs> mess. When she, oh my God. she thought that there was a large insurance policy, he stopped paying the premiums on it. Oh my gosh. Um, the house was highly leveraged with debt. She had no idea. Fortunately, she had a small pension from some work she did early on as a teacher and a little savings, but it was not well, here's, the life. Here's the statistic of the elderly living in poverty. 80% are women, but three out of four of those women were not poor when their husband was alive. Yep. So the husband, just, oh, just as you're yeah. saying, John, the husband passes away. She has no clue about what she's got, where it is. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, Mr. and Mrs. Helper come and help her. And the next thing you know, she's broke. That's right. I talk about that in the book. And unfortunately, my, my role is the cleanup specialist. And, but by, by then, it's too late. Yeah. And yep. it's a really sad situation, you know, especially when at a time when the, the spouse, mostly the female, because she outlives the male, should be grieving in this moment. They are grieving. Now they're grieving, now they're trying grieving to make financially. emotional decisions. It, it, exactly. Yeah, they, exactly. They've had two losses, their yeah. husband and the money. Yeah. And, yep. kind of what, and kind of what you were talking about, John, is once you write that list down that helps you become more aware, then you have to look outside of yourself for a mentor. Really, mentors are people that we think can increase our personal thriving or surviving. Robert and Kim, the reason people follow you guys and Rich Dad is because Rich Dad has become a mentor to a lot of people. And people that will follow what Rich Dad says, they enter a process of transformation around money. They're not just trying to do it. You know, you guys both talk about it often. It's not just about reading a book. It's about going out there and doing things in the real world that change your life. But it's really hard to do it without a mentor. Would you try to fly an air, you know, Robert, you were a helicopter pilot. You stuck, stuck me in, an, in a helicopter without a mentor and say, fly it, JW. What do you think I'm going to do with it? I'm sure you could do it. But here's the. You'd be cheering you on, JW. I, I just want to make an important po point on this because I hear this a lot. It's like I don't know anybody that can help me with my money. I don't. I don't have anyone around me that really can support me financially. And the important thing people need to realize: they don't need to personally know someone in order to be a mentor That's for right. them. Like like yes. JW was saying, both you, both Kim and Robert. They are mentors, and you may not even know them, but they can mentor you from other tools and, and, and books and, and online With mechanisms. YouTube, That's anything. the reason we have yeah. Rich Dad Radio That's shows. That's the reason you have because, the show. Exactly. You know, we're, we, we bring on people who are, who are yeah. somewhat credible, yeah. except for the two of you guys, but to listen to, <laughs> listen, to, listen to different opinions about money. We talk straight because, you know, John, the thing that I get nauseous about is that old financial, financial planner mantra – you know, invest in a well-diversified portfolio yeah. of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a certified financial planner, is a well-diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETF going to save them? No, 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 not at all. That's just a tool, by all means. Not at all. That's a doing. It's a doing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. A financial product is not what people need right now. Uh, they need to change their higher thinking paradigm around how they utilize money. Yeah, J.W., John and I, and Kim, all with the, you have to be, do, and have. And people want to have, yeah. but they don't change what they do. 
but they don't change who they are. They're being. Are you a rich person, yes. poor person, or middle class person? Are you a fat person, skinny person, or unhealthy person? Are you happy or unhappy? If you don't change the being, the having doesn't change. That's really That's right. what, what makes us a little bit different from most people. Right, right Kim? Oh, absolutely. And, and most people say, oh, I want to have this, I want to have this, I want to have this. Um, but, for example, let's, let's, take a, let's take a lottery winner. Okay, lottery winner. Oh, I want to I be rich, so I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. They buy the lottery ticket, they win the lottery. They win millions of dollars. But the statistics are that within three to five years, most of those lottery winners are broke because they don't have the being of a rich person. They have a being of a poor person. But worst of all, they hang out with their most friends and family are poor. And then say, you don't give me money, you're greed like all the rich people. And that's where bear comes in, B-E-A-R, the belief comes in. So people if, if I stiff my friends and family, I'm I'm just as bad as all the other rich guys because they're evil. Yeah, so if somebody's all of a sudden is given, you know, $10 million, but they're used to living paycheck to paycheck, they don't have that beingness of, of, of a rich person, how to handle that money. So just like you said, they give it to friends, they give it to family, they do things from a poor guilt. mindset, they and then guilt. they're broke. And a majority of those lottery winners regret ever winning the lottery in the first place. Yes. Look at look at our <laughs> athletes, right? 78% of NBA players are bankrupt. 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 Not even broke. They're bankrupt within three years of they leaving the NBA. They got more debt. And they got more debt. A lot of said that their posse comes in, their friends yeah. and family. Yeah. Absolutely. See, most people hang That's out right. with poor, desperate, needy people with the same beliefs. B-E-A-R. What does BEAR stand for again, John? Starts with beliefs. And that's the heart of this. Those athletes, those lottery winners, all those people think they need money to be happy. They think they need the posse. They think they need the flat screen. They think they need the the, the, the iPhone. Rich or guilt, the rich are greedy. The rich are greedy. I, I mean, you go down the list. And then those beliefs turn into excuses. Excuses with their money. And those lead to the actions yep. or inactions with their money. Listen to this, JW. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ends in, and then it ends in the destructive results. So really, B E A R, the bear trap, really is somebody's destiny. And right. and so what you're saying for beliefs, you said number one, write down what do you believe about money, all your beliefs, and then write down where did they come from, whose beliefs are they, and what was the third step? And then the the the, the third step that that everyone needs to to really concentrate on is what your life would be like, what your financial life would be like if you didn't have that belief and really start thinking about it. That's where the awareness comes mm. in. Then you start going, oh my gosh, that belief really isn't a belief. It's just an opinion. And that then I've you'll hear carrying. it from your friends and family. And, you, and, and it's been reinforced by your friends and family and the school system and the media and yep. the Kardashians. They reinforce nothing wrong with the Kardashians. <laughs> They're billionaires. But unfortunately, people are looking at them as role models yeah, and following yeah, yeah, their yeah, belief yeah, yeah. mechanisms. There's nothing wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Our guest today has been John McGregor. He's the author of the top ten reasons, the ten top ten reasons the rich go broke. Powerful stories that will transform your financial life forever. And J.W. Wilson, executive director of the Learning Code Institute. And he really does research. <laughs> I can't believe you do this, gentlemen, but you've actually turned into a genius. When I knew you, <laughs> I, when I knew you, 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 you were just a happy, we were just happy drunks playing rugby in Hawaii. And, and anyway, yeah. And it's soon to be released, cracking the learning code. It's been 26 years in production. It may come out soon. But anyway, <laughs> and we, we really do understand that. It really starts with you. Not out, there's no economy outside of you. That's only inside of you. Final words, Kim, on that one? Well, I, I think this is so valuable because so many people, as you say, John, they want the quick fix. They want the magic pill. Just give it to me easy so I don't have to think too much or do some, don't make me uncomfortable. But what, what JW, what Can't you're saying, John, what you're saying, what we're saying is it, you've got you've to take these steps to really to have real change in your life. It's not going to happen with a little pill. It's not going to happen with the new house. It, you've got to really dig deep. So. Or the hot stock. Yep, you got to do it. I mean, there's or no Bitcoin. shortcut. There really is not a shortcut. Or real estate. Or I should or say there is a shortcut because you've got Bayer. That's a bit of a shortcut. And right. JW, you've got cracking the learning code and you're the, the um, Learning Code Institute. Those are somewhat shortcuts because you're actually giving them the process. And I think that's so that's invaluable right. and so important. So That's we'll right. come back. We're going to the most popular part of our program. We'll be Ask Robert. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad 
before that radio show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad program anywhere, anytime on iTunes or Android. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. The reason we archive them is because repetition is how you learn. So if you listen to this show probably 10 times, you might get the message. And I, I do the same thing. A lot of times I'll watch a YouTube video multiple times because I gain more each time. So if you really want to learn something, find out something that kind of destroys your belief system and watch it over and over again. So you can go to the Rich Dad Radio Show on iTunes, I mean at Rich Dad Radio, and now we're the most popular part of our program, which is Ask Robert. And Ask Robert is part, go to, to ask your questions, go to richdadradio.com. Our guest today, a longtime friend, JW, Executive Director of the Learning Code Institute, and John McGregor, longtime friend, also from Hawaii. And he is, his new book is out coming. What's it coming out, John? It's coming out in two months. It should be out by July, early July. Okay, the top 10 reasons the rich go broke, powerful stories that will transform your financial life. And John is a certified financial planner. His website is your Thrive Path, Y O U R T H R I V E Path. Dot com. And JW's website is crackingthelearningcode.com. Any comments, Kim, before we go to Ask Robert? No, I think I think this is really important. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. It's about money. You know, we're talking about financial planning, but really what it's about is is you. It's really about you. Mm. You've, got to, you've got to get into you. And as JW said, it's the inner that will affect the outer. But everybody focus on, on the external as something outside of you is going to make that change. But the only change that really is real true change is only going to happen within. And the reason John and JW are on here is well, all the years I've known John, I trash financial planners every chance I get, but he never got upset with me. But he was telling me how, how um, even though he has a great plan, people don't change. That's the problem. So, Melissa, what's the first question for Ask Robert? Our first question today comes from Ryan in Nashville. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He says, hi, Robert. I'm a big fan, and I've followed you for years. I hear what you say about financial planners and the high commissions they charge. My question is, is there such a thing as a good financial advisor? That's a great question, but first of all, I don't really care about the commissions. See, if you get great financial advice, it's worth the price. What I'm concerned about is when people go to discounts and then they get cheap advice. So I think that's one of the biggest things I say. Like, you know, Kim and I don't use financial planners, but we have accountants and attorneys. And I've heard people say, well, I don't want to pay an accountant. I said, then you must like paying taxes. You know, so they'll scrimp $3,000 on attorneys, an accountant's bill, and pay 30000 in taxes. So that's really the myoptic vision of most people. It's not what you pay, it's what you receive. And, and, and Warren Buffett said, many financial planners, they care more about making money from you, not for you. So John, what do you have because right. being a certified financial planner? I'll say it once again, is that how long does it take to become a regular financial planner? Well, you need several years in the business before you can even start that program. That's well, a certified. 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 become a certified. But how long would it take and me then, to become a financial planner? At least, at least three years. No, no, me. Uh, a regular, a not regular. certified. I'm sorry, pardon not me. Not certified. If you could sit for the exam in six weeks and you'd be considered a financial advisor, a wealth advisor, a financial consultant, all these different terms. So I'd be a professional. You'd be a professional. In Absolutely. Six in six weeks. Wow. I was watching this one program, this young guy who was flat broke. He says, I think I'll become a financial planner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I thought, this guy's got his head screwed on tight. So, John, how would you answer that question? I mean, I mean, it's a loaded question because, I mean, I, one of the biggest problems that people make is they're looking for a financial financial planner. They get invited to the free chicken dinner. They like the guy speaking. They like the staff that's there. And they're suddenly ready to write, give give that individual all their money, their life savings without doing any due diligence. So that's one of the stories in your top 10 reasons the rich go broke. It's called the rubber chicken dinner. Yep. <laughs> and why don't you tell me that story really quickly about the guy who was on stage, a handsome, good looking guy. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I like to do my research and kind of know what's out there, what's being delivered. And so there is a, a very well-known financial advisor out there, and he's nationwide, and, and he has local offices everywhere, and he uh, he advertises a, uh, a luncheon seminar. And so I decided to attend, and they don't know I'm a financial planner. And uh, their, big, their big hook to get people to go to their luncheon seminar is their homemade chocolate chip cookie. That's the big hook. 
<laughs> anyway, that will work in Hawaii. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Hawaii and, they love their they and, love their and, food. And, and by the and by the way, the, by the way, I, I am that chocolate chip cookies are, is my weakness, <laughs> and so that was one reason I wanted to go. And the worst part of the story is the chocolate chip cookies sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I was so bummed. Anyway, I was sitting in the back, and and most of the attendees were in their mid mid to late sixties, if not in their seventies. And you could tell as soon as they walked in the door, they were ready to give their money to the to the financial advisor. I mean, just tell me what to do. Just tell me, do it for me. Oh, if I hear that by by anyone else, um, and so the 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 person speaking was a you know good looking guy, and and he was a, a good presenter, given the regular spiel that 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 I've done and everyone else has done on stage. You know how the markets work and how we invest and and all of that kind of stuff. And he was a bit of a character doing some impressions and of uh, some people uh, I think he did a Jimmy Stewart impression and he told a couple of jokes when the uh, when the Must event a really old crowd cuz I even mean, I don't know who Jimmy Stewart is <laughs> <laughs> when the uh, when the event ended every single person in the audience signed up for their follow up meeting every wow. single one they were throwing money Absolutely. And what did you find out? And so I went to to visit. I went to have my personal visit with the financial, the local financial advisor, and she had been in the business less than two years. And um, but what about the guy on stage? Yeah. So That's a story. Oh. So no. <laughs> so I started peppering her with questions, and she said, "Wow, no one has ever asked me any of these questions." All she wanted to do was give me her quick spiel. But she wanted her name and number, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> and, and all she was expecting me was just to write a check and say, hey, here you go, manage my Take money. Take it, do it for me. And the fees they were charging were outrageous. And that's the other thing I want to talk about is fees. But but before we get there, um, I, I after a while, I leaned in and I said, by the way, who was that speaker? That was He was kind of a character. And she said, she leaned in, she said, don't tell anybody. He's not an advisor. He's a Hollywood actor. He was an essential <laughs> casting. I, like, I could not believe it. And, yeah. um, and, and if you, there's a CFP commercial that talks about that. Certified financial, financial planner. planner that, that, that kind of talks about this where the, uh, the, the, the it's actually a, a real behind the scenes. And, and the people are talking to him. And they're about ready to write a check. And then he takes off his, his wig or something. He's actually a DJ. <laughs> and, and that's what I immediately thought of was that commercial. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is still happening. He was a, And she said, did you watch the Super Bowl a couple of weeks ago? I said, yeah, absolutely. Well, he was featured in the, in the Papa John's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, so, I found so, it on YouTube. So how do you, who, how do you find a good financial well, planner? Y- you got to do your due diligence. You can't just meet with the first person just because you like the furniture in their office or you like the staff or, or the administration. Chocolate chip cookies. So many people, like we said earlier, they're looking for the quick fix. Oh, this is a nice person. Take I trust my them. money. I trust them. What's a Take question? my money. What are some questions people should ask? I've written a white paper on this okay. um, that kind of guides people into what to ask and what to look for. But is that it, at your website? It, it is on my website. Yeah, your, your Thrive Path. Your Thrive Path. You can get that uh, white paper. Okay, questions perfect. to ask when selecting your financial Great. advisor. Great. And it's a pretty thorough process that you must go through. But there's a lot of questions. What's your investment process? What are your fees? How do you charge? What's your follow up? What's uh, how active are you with further education? Um, I mean, there's just there's a myriad of questions that no one asks. All they do is they see the presentation, and they say, "I'm sold." Just take my money, get it off my plate. The other thing I want to talk about is this com- this question he he brought up in the uh, earlier was this question about commissions. This commissions word has now turned into this four letter word like, "Oh my God, I'd never want to pay a commission." Yeah, in the past, commissions were high. I mean, they're, you know, now due to regulatory changes, commissions have come way down. But would you rather pay 3% one time up front or would you rather pay 1.5% annually for the rest of your relationship with the advisor? That's a lot. That's a lot of money. It's could a, be a lot of money. Could, could be, be a, a lot, lot of, money. of money, even 1% annually. A lot of people would rather pay 3% once than 1% for the next 20 years. And the 1% is on the gross amount or what they're making on you? On the gross amount. So whatever money they're what, managing for you, you're going to pay 1% every year, what, one and a half. Whatever that, a whatever that portfolio does, yeah. up or down, they're getting their 1%. And there's this is one guy on television, I'll let, I won't mention his name, but he says, if you have $500,000 or more, come see me. 
Now, the reason they want you to do that, they want you to transfer that 500000 to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. So they collect either the 3% or the 1%? That, yeah, yeah. They, they, exactly. they, they, they're collecting the 1% in that case. It's called assets under management. Assets AUM. under management, yeah. When you hear that word, assets under management, what that means is the investor, the company is making money, you're not. And it's one of the reasons I really, I mean, everybody should have some kind of investment, but I don't invest for the long term with financial planners, simply because I don't know that money will be there. Yeah, I want my money back as soon as possible. Any comments on that, JW? No, but what, exactly what happens is people think what what John is talking about is we. There's a guy who won a Nobel Prize for a thing called slow thinking versus versus fast thinking. And we're all in a hurry, and we want gratification right now. So we don't spend the time doing our research. So some actor gets on stage that's really better off at selling pizzas than he is at selling financial plans. But we like what he says, and we think it's an easy pass, so we write the guy a check. So we really have to do what John was talking about is our due diligence. It's that people spend more time buying their friggin' uh, uh, their, their pancake mix at the grocery store a lot of times than they do figuring out which financial planner they're going to pick. That's what I always say, that people spend more time planning a, uh, a weekend vacation than they do their financial yes. future or even their financial cool. planner. What's, what's the stat on how much time a person av- on average spends managing their money? Managing oh. their own money uh-huh. with a financial advisor? Yeah. Uh, I heard I, it was something like three days if, of their lifetime. I, oh, of their lifetime? Yeah. yeah, I would say it's about three days. Yeah. yeah, because what happens is they'll meet their financial advisor for that first time, give them all their money, and then they say, just do it for me, take care of this for me. And there'll be never, th- there won't be any follow up with that financial advisor. If there is, it's very brief and it's. They don't want you to follow up. <laughs> they don't want you to follow up. <laughs> you know, the other Opposite thing. Opposite of what you do. Yeah, you know, right. The, the other thing I wanted to mention is there's a lot of talk. I mentioned it earlier about this fiduciary advisor versus a non fiduciary advisor. This is one of the biggest myths and scams, in my opinion, and what's going on. There's a lot of advisors out there that call themselves fiduciary, and it's giving people a false sense that they're better off because they're working with a fiduciary who's working in their best interest. It's a a lot of baloney, if you ask me. Bernie Madoff was a fiduciary. There are a lot of fiduciaries out there that have scammed a lot of people out of a lot of money and people thought they were in better hands because they were working with a fiduciary. So don't be fooled just because you're working with a fiduciary, you're in better hands or you're safer or, or, or what have you. So Once again, the best suggestion is just go to John's website, yourthrivepath.com, Y-O-U-R-T-H-R-I-V-E, path.com. Get John's white paper, study it, and then go with the white paper, sit down in front of your next financial planner. And how many, just go down the list, ask them the questions. You ask 10 financial planners those same questions John has, you'll be a lot more educated than you are any place else. Yep. And you know you know what else I find is people are embarrassed. For some reason, they're embarrassed to ask these questions of a financial planner. Why is that? Absolutely, Kim, because they think they're going to look f- foolish in front of the financial advisor. They're, they're actually afraid to ask the questions because the, the adv- they think the advisor is going to think they're dumb. Wow. And there are no dumb questions. The only dumb questions I tell people are the ones that are not asked. Well, there is a stupid question. I have ten thousand dollars. What should I do with it? Well, I always say that's not dumb. That's stupid. I mean, that's dangerous. You're telling this person I'm an idiot. I got ten thousand dollars. Take it from me, please. Take it from me. Tell me anything I want to hear. I hear that every single time. I got a hundred thousand. I got ten thousand. Tell me what to do. And they're the perfect bait, target, victim of financial yeah. planners. That's the biggest problem. Anyway, Melissa, what's the next question for Ask Robert? Our next question comes from Gabrielle in Houston, Texas. Favorite book, Rich Woman. Oh, thank you, Gabrielle. She says, Robert and Kim, I'm 38 and my husband is 55. We've been together for a few years, but I'm starting to worry about fully understanding where our finances stand. He is divorced and I get along with his ex-wife, but I have this feeling she may challenge me over money should something happen to him. He just tells me, not to worry about it when I bring it up. What type of expert should I take my concerns to? A financial planner, an attorney, a therapist? I love my husband, but we don't discuss finances, and I think it's important that we do so sooner rather than later. 
I think you should oh, go on. I think you should go on the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> oh, that's a and, touchy question. And confront your husband on Jerry Springer. Oh. You you would be doing a public service <laughs> okay. to millions of married people. Oh yeah, my red my red flag on that question is she wants to discuss it, and he says it'll be okay, everything's fine. Saying he doesn't want to discuss it, that's a problem. There's actually a story in my book that exactly really? replicates this question. And it was the same situation, and he was an arrogant son of a bitch, and he was divorced, um, and he refused to talk to his new young wife about their finances. And he probably had a new hot one on the side. I Maybe. I don't know about that. But um, um, You've seen it once. You've seen it twice. He had insurance policies that he meant to transfer the beneficiary designations over to the new wife. He didn't do it. The retirement plan, you have to transfer the beneficiary designations to that, to the new wife, because if not, those are contracts. Regardless of who you're married to, they're going to go to the whoever was written on that statement. So anyway, he, if, his, if his ex-wife is on the contract, she, my ex-wife gets it. So what, exactly. So, so he, he, he suddenly, he had a heart attack, oh, gosh. and the young new wife with two kids was left with nothing. So what and there's a there's a happier ending to this. Yeah. I won't tell it, but but it the was book a, has the top ten reasons to rich phone <laughs> broken. <laughs> but she needs. We sold some copies just now. She yeah. needs to she needs to meet with either a financial advisor or even more so an attorney to re, and she needs to make this absolutely conditional yeah. um, that that this stuff gets done. I mean, can she, she's she should just say, hey, if you die, where am I? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, he's got to have some concern for her if they're married. I mean, just be blunt, I guess. I, that's a touchy one. Mm -hmm. So final words on that, J.W.? I mean, how do you handle a husband who's a lying, <laughs> lying <laughs> rat? Yeah, well, here's what happens. I mean, for women, and Kim knows this, we're afraid, women a lot of times are afraid to upset the apple cart. Yep. And they've also placed themselves in a subservient, not an equal position to their husbands. And so they give up their power. And the minute you give up your power, you're in trouble. And really, we've created, and this is why the, 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 the women's movement is so vital to help us change our world, because women now are embracing their power, where they're starting to ask, I, I bet you 10 years ago, this woman might have never asked this question, but thank God things are changing. So more women are asking questions that are basically changing the paradigm of the men and women's relationships all over the world. And this is vital to have, to have the kind of world we want to have. Look, men have got us to this point right now where the world is right where it is. What we need is, we, quite frankly, from a neurological standpoint, women's brains are very different than men. The way they connect in the right and the left hemisphere, uh, the amount of a thing called myelin that, that makes the connections between neurons, the communication go faster. Women have more of that. And we really need women's brains and all the things that we do. And we need women to understand that and take on their own power. Well said, JW. Well, 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 well said. said. Thank so, you. Once again, I want to thank John McGregor and JW Wilson. Great, great, great friends. And final words, Kim? No, I just, I, I like what you just said there, JW. Thank you for that. And, uh, Sure. And I think uh, sometimes women just need to, they need to say what they need to say and be aware that the consequences are what they're going to be and be okay with the consequences. So I, this yeah. has been a great show. I'm, I'm, I, there, we're just kind of scratching the surface here, but uh, there's so much. And I want to just recommend um, both JW's website, crackingthelearningcode.com, and John McGregor's website, yourthrivepath.com, because there's a wealth of information there. And once again, I thank all for asking the questions to ask Robert. And submit your questions to askrobert.com. No, richdadradio.com. And thank you for all listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.
Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn